Okay, so last time, uh, the last video I did about this, uh, the, someone asked me how to take a landscape mesh and turn it into a solid. And uh, I'm just going to show you an easier way to do that. So what you do is you select everything, you select the whole mesh, and then you go straight to the uh, extrude tool and you make give it a negative offset. And so you can see now, basically, it's made a solid. Uh, it's got the, the, the height map still there in the base, but if you, if you change the end type in the properties to flat, then it just projects that whole interior down onto the extrusion plane. Uh, so you can see it's all just been, the mesh, is, mesh has just been flattened. So you might want to go in and, and smooth it out if it's, if those you know, sort of sliver triangles might be a problem if you want to do more processing. So you can use the smoothing brush to do that. Uh, but you can see that, so that was one step, so that was really quick. Um, if you have a mesh like this and you want to give it a flat base, you know, um, it's a little bit more complicated. Because uh, you don't want to project this down because the nose will hang over the end. So I'm going to use do it the same way I did last time. Select the boundary, smooth the boundary, um, use transform faces to, to bring it in to make a little hole, uh, and then go to the, the, the volume brush here. Uh, you have to hold down shift to use the smooth tool. It's a secondary brush. And you smooth it, clean up the mesh, and fill the hole. Okay, so now I've got a base, but it's not actually flat. Uh, if you... Uh, but we so we're going to make it flat. So the first thing you do, go to the selection tool, and go to the lasso mode, um, which won't have a brush then. So you now you're drawing a curve on the surface. So you kind of have to carefully draw right al along that outer loop there. Uh, but it'll select the interior, uh, and now we're going to extrude and set the end type. So you can see it's not flat here. You set the end type to flat, and you'll get a flat base. Um, Okay, so that, now that's got it sort of a sort of stand, but actually we can do a little bit more interesting stuff with the transform tool um, if you want to give it a little bit more of a fancier base. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll use transform and I'll scale it out a bit uh, and and shift it down, and now you see it's got a sort of uh, I don't know what that's called, kind of a, another ring around the base. We will give it another one, um, and now we've got a little bit more of interesting sort of stand for this head. Um, and again, if you don't like that hard ring around the bottom of the neck that we kind of added with the boundary smoothing, you can go in with the smoothing brush uh, and just brush along that, that ridge to smooth it out. Um, and then you'll just have the ridge at the bottom. Okay, so that's another way to close something off. I'm going to show you a few other, other examples now of ways to do that uh, using different, different tools so you can have different kinds of control. So here's another example. So here's a scan that's actually closed off already. You can see it was the whole thing was scanned, so it's kind of rough at the base. It probably wouldn't stand up very nicely. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the new booleans to uh, to subtract off a box basically, and that will give us a nice flat base. So what you want to do is import uh, a plane, and make sure you hit append when you import it, and then you're we're just transforming it here. So you select all and transform. T is the hotkey to transform tool, and we're going to set an offset. So basically, we're just creating something that we're going to subtract off the model, and then it'll be left with a flat base. So to do the Boolean now, you cancel out of any tools. You hold down Shift, click on the head, and then hold down Shift and click on the on the base, and then you go to the edits and the Boolean difference, and you accept that, and you can see now it's stitched. Uh, the face is right along the edge, so this thing's watertight, and it's got a nice flat base that you could stand it up on if you print it off. Okay, here's another one. Here's a head. Um, it's got a hole in the bottom, this one. So let's do the plane again. No, sorry, this one I'm going to actually do a little, do something else. So I made this this pedestal, and I'm going to append that pedestal, and then we're going to use a boolean to combine these two. Um, so s cancel out of anything, click on the pedestal, hit start the select tool, hit control A to select all, and then transform and basically, I'm just going to position it here, um, and I'm going to try and get it, you know, to sort of a, a scale that I like. And um, what is going to happen is that some of the head is going to be sticking out the bottom, and that's not going to work. So if you try to do a boolean like that, it won't work because the loop there's an open loop sticking out there. So what I'm going to do is go to the smooth brush, and then make sure the whole boundary is unchecked, and that's going to let me smooth the boundary. Um, and then I'm just going to scrub, and basically, it's going to shrink. That part, and as soon as it disappears, it's inside, and so you don't have to worry about it anymore. So you just do that on anything that's visible, and then you select them both, and you can see here, you know, they're separate right now, separate objects. But we're going to do the union, Boolean union, 
and uh, after you hit accept, they'll be stitched together. Um, and so now that's a solid, the printable solid. And here's one more. So this mesh has a couple holes in it. So actually we're going to use the new inspector tool to fill in all these holes. This is a new tool that you probably haven't seen. Um, it's a sort of in beta right now. So you go up there at the top. It's there when nothing's selected. You start the inspector. Now you see you've got these little spheres and sticks. So each of those is a, is a hole or something. So there's, a, there's an auto repair you can click on to just repair everything. But also if you just go around and left click on those spheres, it'll automatically fill in that hole. You can see it filled in each eye there. If you right click, then what it does is it exit out of the inspector and it selects that hole. So now you can, you know, you have a selection already, you can do other stuff. So what I'm going to just do is a standard fill here. Um, so now it's a solid, so it's printable, but we want to give it a base. And this one I'm going to do some sculpting. I'm going to give it a sort of a tripod type base instead of some basic flat thing, and then we're going to flatten it out using a Boolean. So here I'm just sculpting sort of semi-randomly some some legs off the head. I, I figure I'll need all four of these, otherwise it might fall over. So I'm holding down shift to do the smoothing, the secondary brush, and the primary brush, primary brush is the drag brush. Okay, now I'm going to basically cut the bottom off there, so I'm going to import a plane again. Um, but this time, instead of subtracting it, I could easily subtract it, but I'll you know, just to, for the sake of showing you all the booleans, I'll do an intersection. Um, so basically, i got to roughly position the plane, so I'm going to cut from there. I'm going to get rid of everything below that. Um, I'm going to do an extrude to make, make it a solid, but I'm just going to just do that a little bit, and it's going to leave the top face selected. And then I'm going to do transform. So basically, an intersection is the sort of combination of the two volumes, everything that's inside both. So what I have to do is I have to create an enclosing surface. Um, here it kind of doesn't make a difference, like it's subtract, but there's other kinds of shapes you might want where you have to do an intersection. Um, but so what I can do now, I've got that the ret what I want to keep inside of that box. So I select them both, do the Boolean intersection, and now it keeps everything that was inside both of them, inside both those volumes. And so it basically it's just going to cut off the ends there. And now we've got something that, you know, if you 3D printed it out, that will probably stand, probably won't fall over. Um, and since we're talking about 3D printing, I'm going to show you one more thing. Uh, it's how you can sort of hollow a model a little bit, and that might make it cheaper to print if you're printing stuff. So here I've selected, I've gone back to that first head I did, um, and basically I selected some bottom, and I'm going to do a transform, and I'm going to transform up into the model. So basically I'm making a space inside of the model. Um, you know, and there's other, you could make this more complicated, the space, um, but, but I'm just going to do a very quick one here, quick and simple. Um, so that just went straight up, so I, I do know that the head is wider at the top and here than it is at the bottom, so I'll scale it out a little bit. On the other end, I, I did undo's there to go back. Um, so now I made the space kind of cone-shaped a little bit on the inside. Um, and so the reason you might want to do that, it's still a solid, so when you can still 3D print it, so here's, I've uploaded it to Shapeways, and you can see, um, you know, this, it's a, it's a big print, so that, but the, the solid one is, you know, 3,900, so this is just based on volume on Shapeways. And then with the hole in bottom, in the bottom, is almost half as much, so it's gotten rid of half the material, so, you know, if you made this smaller, it'd be cheaper.